A big episode this week. We get some skins on the wings. I fit the leading edges and an old buddy comes by and we start the fuel tank. Take a look. All the skins are on, uh, and these things are solid. That's uh, a little bit of a testament to my building, um, but 99% to the engineering of these things. But man, it feels like they are uh, cemented in, which they kind of are. Um, I'll tell you what, care during the ridge prep, rib prep stage was huge. Um, I could feel a lot of that hard work paying off. The reason is I didn't have to search a whole lot, trying to get my Clecos in the hole, things were lining up. That's all due to taking time while fluting and making sure that lib, the ribs are flat before they even go into the structure. Um, this is cool. Now I've got to drill a couple hundred holes, move some Clecos, drill a couple hundred other holes, uh, and then we'll see what's next. So there's two things happening um, in here right now. The first is I have pre-drilled uh, or final drilled all of the holes on both wings. That means the bottom skins are coming off. So I'm removing all the Clecos and storing those for now. The top skins will stay on. Uh, the second thing happening is that Chom Chom here uh, has found a new game of stealing my Clecos and hiding them in his bed, which is really fun for both of us. The instructions will have you draw some lines on the skin that all intersect at the tie down hole. We'll discover if this is effective or not in a few minutes. We're moving on to the leading edge of the wings, which is cool, um, except I need to start by making uh, a little cradle jig that I didn't make before. You can see I got started um, with a rough outline that looks like a seven-year-old drew it um, and some marks here. So I'm gonna finish this up so that we can uh, pull out the parts for the leading edge of the wing and, and get moving on that. Uh, it does involve using my least favorite tool of all the jigsaw, but I'll, I'll make it work.
This thing truly is a hunk of crap. Uh, I have two leading edge sheets and two fuel tank sheets. Uh, I need to separate the leading edge sheets first, um, set the fuel tank sheets aside, and then we're going to modify it for a stall warning system. So things came to a screeching halt real fast here with the stall warning system. It's confusing. Uh, I have these alignment tabs that, that don't align unless I put this on backwards and that's had me searching the instructions but then it seems I don't really even need the alignment tabs because that's only for creating a hole in the skin which is already here. Um, and so I guess somewhere along the way they've started pre-punching these holes. Same with these holes up front for the actual stall warning tap. In my research I found that a lot of people are just leaving this off and covering the holes entirely because their avionics system is going to handle anything that a little mechanical stall warning sensor is going to do. And now I'm wondering, do I even want to install the thing because I plan on having the same avionics that these guys have. <sighs> It turns out, I think I do. I do want the stall warning system as a failsafe. It can be removed later. Uh, I think worst case scenario, we've got an access hatch, which is already there, so I can't omit that, and a little hole to cover up on the front. So I'm gonna continue um, to install the stall warning system, system um, and, and do my the best I can to make sense of the instructions, knowing that they're coming from the perspective of this hole doesn't exist and we need to create it. So there's a limited number of steps that I actually have to complete before I can continue on. Jeez. Okay, so here's where we're at. Um, out of all the instructions, I only have like two steps I need to do. One of them's done, and the other one is to enlarge these holes to number 10 which is pretty big, and I'm expecting to get some chatter out of the drill bit. Um, I'm not too concerned, because the idea is to make a bigger hole. And what winds up a little dirty, I can clean up with a file. That's the thinking anyways. All right, and there we have it. I've poked a hole in a perfectly good piece of sheet metal that I'll later probably pay a painter to fill.
I've heard that that can be uh, a real bear to, to get this put together. Um, I'm happy to say that was not my experience and this all went together pretty well. Leading edge one is attached to the plane, incredibly. Uh, it's moving quick. Uh, here comes leading edge two, the right wing leading edge, creating it now. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, I'm running really low on Clicos, go figure. Um, so I'm gonna leave them out of here for now and uh, pull some in while I can wait for some more to be uh, delivered so that I can keep moving on other parts like the fuel tanks. Uh, this joining piece here needs to come off, so I'm gonna take it off. So as you can probably see, this will get a string of nut plates, similar to what's down here, uh, and the fuel tank will screw into both the spar and right along here. Very cool. So here's that update I owe you about those lines all pointing towards the tie down hole. And, and they're all pointing towards this hole right here. Um, that Vans has pre-punched for us. And that hole lines up exactly with where my tie down is. So I don't know that the lines were necessary unless you deviated from the structures a bit or um, didn't, weren't exact with your bracket and then it might not line up with this hole. My guess is they added this hole when they uh, started pre-punching that stall warning access hatch you see up above it, whatever. Uh, it made my job easier, and as you can see here, it lined up perfectly for that tie down hole. Frickin' dog had like seven Clecos in his bed. A good friend of mine stopped by and helped me with this fuel tank. Uh, some of you might recognize the top of his head from uh, the previous video where he spent a few hours just deburring ribs with me. A uh, few others may recognize him uh, from long ago videos where he actually taught me how to fly. He was my flight instructor. We got to work on the fuel tank and we got a bit carried away because uh, I just started fitting ribs. I was, I was um, intrigued to see how they would fit and, and here we have a fuel tank. Unfortunately, that's not what the instructions say to do. Um, it's fine, I wanted to see how it fit together anyways, but I do have to remove some of this because the order of operations is a bit different than the wing tips. So I'm gonna pull some of these Clecos and we're actually gonna sort of reassemble this on the spar itself. Let's step back a bit. The fuel tank construction is remarkably similar to the leading edge. There are some differences. 
First, there's a number of brackets that have to be fabricated that hold the fuel tanks to the spars. These brackets are constructed from Z-bent aluminum that has some holes pre-drilled from vans. The holes will get some nut plates and need deburring and the usual treatment. In addition to that, some other differences include stiffeners that will go on the skin of the fuel tanks. These go on the underside and help carry the weight of the fuel that wouldn't be there in the leading edge. Because of the brackets and the stiffener, as well as the baffle and the fact that the tanks are sealed, there are some differences in the order of operations in which you build them, and the reason why you build them on the spar versus on the table like you saw me do to the leading edge. The instructions around this aren't incredibly clear, and in fact there's some really vague spots that I point out in my blog, and I put a link here in the co comments of this video if you want to take a look. However, I can't fully blame the instructions for me getting a little carried away and building this thing on the table. I was just plain excited. As you can see here, it's really cool to see this come together. Alright, so I'm back here and now I'm laying some of the groundwork for that fuel tank and the reasoning why we're going to wind up building it on the spar. These are the brackets that are going to hold the tank on and later you'll see the baffle that will be the rear wall of the fuel tank that will actually hold the gas in the tank. I feel like it's really hard to guarantee perfect fit without any of the ribs in it though. Um, so I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do. And neither is he. Well, I got the skin fit about as well as I could. Um, there's about a sixteenth inch up at that top corner, but again, it's so hard without the structure. So I'm moving on to the next step, because the next step is simply more fitting and I think it might answer some of my questions. Some of you might be wondering, what is this contraption? Uh, I didn't have a drill stop per se, but I did have a countersink bit, and when flipped upside down, works pretty well as a drill stop. It's gonna keep me from hitting the spar when I'm making these holes. second time the left fuel tank this time on the wing it's pretty freaking cool 
Okay, so I have now the left hand fuel tank Clecoed together on the spar on the plane. That gap that was up here uh, completely closed up. In fact, all the gaps have completely closed up. And the fit is just astonishing. Um, how they've engineered a kit to and the tooling involved to to have metal go through all these bends and still line up at the end is incredible. Um, but but they've done a wonderful job because this thing fits perfect. Uh, and I'm going to take very little of the, the credit, the responsibility for that. Because um, I think I've done everything in my power to work against what they've done here. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm continually excited. This is really cool. Um, and, and so, on to the next step. We're really starting to see... Um, that RV wing shape that, that I sort of have a love-hate relationship with, that really long wing cord, short stubby wing that I think um, really gives them, when you're looking up at the sky, that RV silhouette. And you can definitely see it here now that the wing's all together. <laughs> 